How are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling fine. Good. So am I. <laughs> There's some coffee on. It'll be ready in a few minutes. And if you feel like some breakfast... No, or... coffee will be just fine. Then I'll have to get going. Well, there's no rush, is there? No, but I've got to go home and change my clothes. And then I've got to get to the hourglass and open up. No. I phoned Kath at home this morning told her to open up. Said you wouldn't be in till tonight. Huh? So, till then, the day's your own. Told you you are going to like working for me, didn't I? <laughs> there you go. Stay in bed all morning if you feel like it. Sounds to me like a good idea. I don't believe this, Sam. They're still not there. Either that or they've gone completely stone deaf. Who? They're mallets. I've been banging on their door, haven't I? Well, maybe they're having a lie-in. Or maybe they think you're the debt collector. Yeah. I'll give them a ring. See if they answer. What's their number now? Oh, yeah. Why is it me, eh? Why do I always get the awkward jobs? Hmm? Why do the police, why do they come here? Because you're the next door neighbour and that's what next door neighbours are for. Now look, I'm off to work. Right. Ah, there's still no answer. They must have gone away. Oh, Curly, stop fretting. They'll be back sooner or later. Anyway, maybe the police have been in touch with them already. I hope so. I mean, I hope it's not down to me to tell them. Ah. 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 Kevin, lad. There you are. It does my heart good to see you working. Huh? I thought you'd be shut today. No such luck. Never stop these days, Alec. Oh, well, that's because you're your own boss, you see. It's a wonderful incentive. <laughs> anyway, I'm here to put money in your pocket. Can you have a look at my car? Where is it? Well, it's, it's in the lock-up. I can't shift the damn thing. It won't start. So if you could just have a walk round there, I'm sure you'd sort it out in no time. Yeah, well, that's exactly what I've got, Alec. No time. See this car here? And that one? And that one? They're all wanting attention, and I'm on my own. Where's my lad? What's his name? Tony. Your guess is as good as mine. He's let me down again, hasn't he? I've got a grip of him. Yeah, well, I mean, he knows how we fixed this wall blind he'd been this morning, but he's not here, so what am I supposed to do? Send out a search party? Right. Ta -da. Betty is poorly. Billy's sent her back to bed. Oh, that's great, that is. Joyce has let me down now, Betty. I mean, what are we going to do for bar food? You don't eat food with ale like this. Of course we do. Morning. Here, Morning. don't you be taking your coat off. Why, what? Because you're going out again. Betty's let me down. We've no food for the bar, so I want you to go down to that freezer place. You know where Curly works. Fairman's, but he doesn't work there anymore. Well, the shop's still there, isn't it? Now, look, they do them big packets of Cornish pasties. Mm. Get two of them. Uh, and some sausages, you know, a couple of bags of them. And mm. chips, three or four bags. You know, you can do it microwave. Here, Jack, give a £30 out the till. I'm supposed to be working behind the bar, not go running errands. Flower, if it were up to me, you would do knelt. Recline on the bar on the silken cushion, but the wife won't have it, you see. Here, now, here, take these two. Because last time I went to Furman's, I charged me 5p for a carrier bag. Well, can I get a taxi bag? Can you act us like? Get the bus. Hey, up, Jack. For you, son, I. Oh, right, well. Give us a couple of bites, then, eh? Right. Uh, you all look so miserable, Ashley. Well, how are you, right? I used to walk about with a big smile on my face. What's up? Nothing. What is it? Women's rule? No, I will be at your age, Cocker. I don't know what to do about Maxine. I just don't be seen getting anywhere. I don't know. Well, she's different from other girls. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard out like it? Uh, uh, uh. Different, she's just the same as all the rest. Right. If you want to get anywhere, flash your money about. That'll get her interested. That's what women want. Money spending on them. Come on, Sheila, you should have got this little way by now. I've been helping to unload in the yard. Mr Furman said I don't to... want a load of excuses. Just get on with it. Well, I didn't expect to see you here today. No. Well, I'm not working till tonight, so... Anyway, you OK? Yeah. Anything happened? Mm, like what? Don't know, really. No, it's just like one day after another, innit? Have you? Well, I just wondered if anybody had said anything to you about being moved somewhere else, that's all. Well, who was saying that to me? I don't know, I'm just asking. Hey. Who's that guy talking to Jerry Turner? The horrible-looking one. The, uh, 
They call him Dobbin when he can't hear him. I wouldn't fancy bumping into him on a dark night. Yeah, uh, Fraser used to call him his branch manager. Why? What's he got to do with Fraser Anderson? Well, he does things for him, you know, sorts things out if they need sorting. But uh, you don't argue with him, you know what I mean? So, have you, uh, have you seen anything of Fraser since he got out? I can't help but see him. He's bought the hourglass, you know, the wine bar where I work. Oh, he has, has he? Well, must be as keen on you as he always made out to be. But his wife won't be happy. Fraser's married? Oh, yeah, of course he is. Has he not mentioned it? Thanks for coming, Mum. I appreciate it. Yeah, you look after yourself, Steve. Be careful, eh? Yeah, you too. See ya. See ya. Small world, isn't it? Young Steve looks well, considering. I've got the motor outside. Can I uh, drop you at the hourglass? No, thanks. I've got my own car now. <laughs> Oh, that's Fraser for you. He's a real soft touch to work for. Well, you know that, don't you? He's a great bloke. As long as you keep him happy. Thanks a lot. Thank See ya. Bye. Oh, it's you. Uh, just a minute, madam. Have you paid for everything in this trolley? Yes, of course I have. You won't mind if I check then, will you? Yes, I would mind very much. Now, I've got work to do and I've no time to play games, so will you just let me... Oh, uh, this is no game, I can assure you. If you'll follow me to the manager's office, please. All right, Curly, you should have been with us last night. Jumpy you. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Hey, it done you good, just what you need. Yeah, we got smashed. You mean you did? Dancing on the kitchen table at his pals, Ewa. It was great. We didn't come home, we slept at his. <laughs> what a night, though, had you? Uh, listen, um, the police were here last night looking for you. Gary, what have you been up to? Well, no, uh, Jude, it was you that they were looking for. And they asked me if I see you, can you get in touch with them at the police station? Why? What's happened? Well, they were a bit cagey. Oh, come on. They must have said something. Well, yeah. Somebody was uh, knocked down by a car last night on Ashdale Road. A woman. It's my mum, isn't it? Well, they didn't say. Well, not to me, anyway. It's mum. Why else would they want me? Gary, it's my mum. <laughs> It got in my bag, but I certainly didn't put it there. Now, come on. Miss Malone here, she saw you slip the item into your shopping bag. Well, then she's lying. You're not helping yourself. Shall I call the police, Mr. Furman? And you're not giving me much choice. Now, if you were to admit your offence, since we've never had occasion to stop you before this... I think we have to prosecute on this one, Mr. Furman. I know this woman by sight. She lives with Mr. Watts. I knew I'd seen you somewhere. Oh, hold on a minute. I do not live with Mr. Watts. I share a house with him. I pay him rent. I doubt you'll get her to admit the truth, Mr. Furman, but my guess is Mr. Watts put her up to this. Why would he do that? Mr. Furman. Not now, Sheila, later. But Mr. Furman... I said, not now, Sheila. We're in the middle of something important. I know, Mr. Furman, but that's why I'm here. This lady didn't steal anything. Miss Malone put it in her shopping bag. Rubbish! Rubbish! I'd better tell you, Mr Furman, I've been having... I've been having lots of problems with Sheila recently, and I was hoping I wouldn't have to complain to you about her, but... Well, I've had to reprimand her several times recently for... for being idle, for... for stop going missing, and this is obviously her way of trying to get back at me. Did Mr Watts put her up to it, I wonder? Well, it's possible, yes. 
There you are, Rita. Oh, thanks, Alex. <laughs> now, cheers. cheers, look. Now, this little outing we had in mind for tomorrow, there's a bit of a problem, the car's playing up. Now, Kevin Webster's flatly refused to have a look at it. By that, I dare say he meant you'll have to wait your turn. I've just seen him now, beavering away with his head in somebody's engine. Yes, but I'm a neighbour. We took his flaming kids out in it for the week. Should have put himself out for me. Anyway, it looks like we'll have to put it on hold, unless, of course, we go in your car. We're only going to Manchester. There are such things as buses, you know. Well, I never travel on a bus, me. I'm never going anywhere I want to get to. Well, it'll be an experience for you. We'll bus it. They earn a lot of money, don't they, nowadays, policemen? No idea. Oh, you've not asked it. God, I would. Yes, Maxie, we know you would. Oh, get your wallet out, Alan. Let's see how much you've got. No, you can be more subtle about it. You don't have to be so crude. Mm. Oh, God. Here comes my fan club. Hiya. Hey, Rash. Um, I was thinking, do you fancy coming out tonight? <sighs> Talking to me? Oh, tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Wish you'd asked me sooner. Well, you've got to take it safe, it's on it, boom. Oh. Oh, really? Oh, she likes them. Oh, it's such a pity that you didn't ask her sooner. Well, actually, I could put them off. Um, yeah, all right, actually, I will. Oh, great. What are you drinking? Nothing. You're all <laughs> Same right. again, please. Right. You're not really going to go out with him, are you? Well, I've got nothing else to do tonight, have I? Anyway, I like Sonic Boom. Hey, right. up, Jim, lad. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> What are you having? You and Orlandy Pints, is it? Oh, yes, please. Well, there's a welcome. You better bring mine an orange juice. Oh, still on the wagon, eh? Aye. How was Ellen? Well, as usual, it was green and wet. Hey, V, what have you got in the menu, love? Nothing. Oh. Betty's Pauline. I've sent Samantha out for some provisions. She's vanished on me. Wait till she gets back. She's in dead trouble. I don't even know why I agreed to come in. You'll be glad you did, Norman. Believe me. Why should I? Last time I was here, you told me I should never set foot on these premises again. The next minute, you're ringing me up, begging me to come in. What is going on? <sighs> Something I very much wanted to be in on. After you. You would never have walked out on me if you'd... Sam, what are you doing it? What is going on? I'll tell you. Miss Malone tried to fit this lady up on a phony shoplifting charge. That's not true, Mr. Furman. She tried to slip something into my bag, Curly. You don't seriously believe this woman, surely? I believe it. I know exactly what you're capable of. It doesn't have to be a question of belief or disbelief. Fortunately, we have a witness. Sheila Dixon saw Miss Malone slip the item in question into your friend's shopping bag. But the girl's lying, I told you, for reasons of her own. This is why I've asked you to come here, Norman. I want to apologise to you for believing what Miss Malone told me. And I want you to hear me say, Miss Malone, you're sacked as of right now. I want you out of the store within five minutes. You can't sack me. For one thing, you haven't given me a warning. It's, it's unfair dismissal. I'll take you to a tribunal. I'll get compensation, reinstatement. And it won't do Furman's any good, will it? I'll give you a choice. I can fire you right now, and you can take your chance at a tribunal and in a police court, or... What do you mean, a police court? I shall ask Miss Failsworth to make a formal complaint to the police. Sheila Dixon is a witness to what you did. Or there is an alternative. What? You can resign right now. I'll write you a glowing reference, and you can go quietly. If... Miss Failsworth is willing, of course. Is, uh, is Liz around? Mrs. MacDonald? I don't know. Who wants her? I'm sorry. I said who's asking. Oh, right. Well, um, I'm a son. Oh, so you're Andy, eh? I've heard all about you. What, off my mum? Yeah, well, don't you believe any of it, mate? No, not of her. Of your Steve. We shared a party warm, me and him, at Strangeways. Next cell down a passage. Fraser Henderson's my name. Right, well, um, if my mum's about... No, not till tonight. I gave her the day off. I bought the place. Hadn't she mentioned it? No, no, um, I've been away for a while. I've been in Ireland. Oh, well, you've got some catching up to do. What are you drinking on the house? Um, no thanks. I'm a bit pushed for time as it happens. Uh, I'd best be getting off. Some other time. 
That's the son that's getting the education. But it's not as thorough as Steve's mind. Or as expensive. Tony, it's you. You're not very popular in this house at present. Still, you better come in. Kevin, it's Tony. Oh, say you was a bit late. I've just closed the garage after doing a 12-hour day, thanks to you. Where was you? Playing football, showing off your new car? Well, don't bother telling me, Tony, cos I've had it with you. Just cleared off, OK? I had an accident. Well, I'm not interested. Just cleared off. Kevin, I think we ought to listen. After I finished work yesterday, this woman... A dog ran out, you see, and, and this woman, well... I think she was trying to catch it. It wasn't my fault. What, you've, you've knocked somebody down? No, it, it wasn't my fault. Showing off in your new car. Foot hard down, was it? No, honest, honest. There was nothing I could do. It, it was that. It was, it was Mrs Smedley. What? You mean Judy's mum, Joyce? <gasps> Brilliant. Great public relations. Your local friendly garage. Service your motor. Run your mother over. Don't talk like that. Look, it's him! I've had enough of him. He leaves it all to me. Don't do any work. Now he's knocking over the neighbours. You don't understand. She's dead. Tommy, look, you better sit down. No, I want to go and see him, the mallets. Tell him how it was, to try and explain how, how I couldn't help it. No, Tommy, not tonight. In a day or two, maybe, but not tonight. I suppose we best look through this lot. Check a purse, see if it's gone. Everything's gone, girl. Everything. I don't give a monkeys about what's in a purse. Hold me, Gary, please. Come here, Lord. Come here. Oh. Why couldn't I just do what she asked? All I had to do was walk the dog. That's what she asked, and I didn't do it. And if I had, she'd still be here. It's not like that, Jude. It doesn't work like that. It happens if it's going to happen, whatever you do or don't do. It wasn't your fault. Take me upstairs, Gary. What? Well, blimey, Jude. Well, it doesn't seem right. I don't care what it seems. I need you to love me. I don't know why I just do. Hold me. Love me. I need you, Gary. I need you, please. I saw policemen knocking on Mallet's door last night. I told you, didn't I, Mrs Bishop? I knew to be trouble. You did, Mr Sugden. You said, I wonder what those mallets have been up to this time. Aye. Poor old Joyce, eh? Not so old, Jack. I mean, what would she be? Fifty? If that. It seems very unfair. Of course it's unfair. I mean, it's life, isn't it? There's no fair about it. I do know that, Mr Brennan. My own husband was taken long before his time. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not being personal. I'm just saying uh, it's a lottery, isn't it? No. Somebody wins in a lottery. Nobody gets out of life alive, do they? Oh, please. It's distressing enough when it's somebody you know. You don't have to make it worse, Mr Duck. Right, we, we'll all have a drink, eh? Landlord's bottle, eh? Do you know how I feel terrible? I mean, it were only this morning. Poor woman, I were calling her for not doing me cleaning. Yeah, I know. I mean, I was feeling sorry for myself sat in Furman's office being accused of shoplifting, but something like this really puts it in perspective. Mm. Well, I know how you feel, love. It's very hurtful. Hurtful being accused of shoplifting. I know, I've had some. Mind you, it's true what they say. There's always something... There's like... always someone else worse off than you, yeah. Yeah, well, you can mock you, but it's true. It might be very well true, Vera, but people don't have to keep saying it. Yeah, but I bet you're happy about today. You know, you got your job back and a pay rise. I deserve that. Ah, but for me, you would never have got it. I hope you're not thinking of a rent reduction. No, I'm thinking I can't believe what I'm seeing. What? Celebrating, are we? Anne, look, I don't know why you're here, but... I think uh... you do. I suppose there's no danger of you saying you're sorry for what you put me through. It's not me that's going to be sorry. 
no, I didn't think there was. You just can't stand it, can you? A woman being better than you, being brighter than you. That's why you schemed and plotted to get Eric against me. It was me that put you on the ladder. It was me that got you promoted. I don't think you've won, Curly, because you haven't. One day, and I don't care how long it takes me, I'll make you pay for this. Anne! Blimey. Sam, get us a pint. What's wrong, Liz? What's worrying you? I'm just wondering. If I start making myself too comfortable, what are the chances of your wife walking in? Ah, oh, so that's it, the wife. I knew there was something. Why did you let me find out? Why didn't you tell me? I never gave you the thought. Well, the way I look at it, it doesn't matter. Oh, come on! We've all got baggage. You've got your ex... What's his name? Jim? Yeah, but he is my ex, Fraser. I don't go home to him behind your back. I don't keep him a secret. I don't go home to anybody behind your back. I'm still married to her, sure, in law. We're not divorced. The marriage was over years ago. Is that true? I have to know. You're jealous, aren't you? I like that. There's no one else. You're it. Where is she? A wife. Head for Cheshire. You come to a nice big detached house, double garage, three bathrooms, probably about a dozen cats by now. I never see her. And is it over? Really over between you and her? I've told you. See, people who play straight with me, I play straight with them. People I care about, I'll look after. Trust me. Okay? <laughs>